Welcome to the English Department. My name is Stephanie Richardson and I'm the Learning Manager in charge of this area. In this department, we offer a wide variety of English qualifications. We offer Level 1 Functional Skills and Level 2 Functional Skills. We offer the GCSE Retake in case you didn't quite get the grade you wanted first time around. And we also have a wide variety of A-levels taught by extremely experienced subject professionals. Hello, my name is Libby Morgan and I am the course leader for English Literature A-Level. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the course. The first thing to say about English Literature is uh, it will be right for you if you have an absolute passion for reading. That is the key ingredient. So if you've always read and really enjoyed your GCSE Literature study, this would be the course for you. I think the easiest thing to do is to take you through the text requirements. That's always the biggest question we get at open evening, is what are the texts that we're going to study? So I'm going to give you a quick overview of some of the texts that we do. In your first year, you study prose, drama and poetry. The poetry is modern and we have 20 poems from the Poems of the Decade anthology. Uh, the advantage of this is all the poems were written after the year 2000, so most of the poets are still alive, in which case we can actually take you to go and see them. That's an added advantage. You'll also be familiar with the comparative element of this when you do your GCSE Literature Power and Conflict Anthology or the Carol Ann Duffy where you have two pieces of poems that you have to compare as an unseen. So that's the first thing. Then we move on to the prose and we have uh, two texts that we compare. Oscar Wilde's novel, his only novel, The Portrait of Dorian Gray, and also Toni Morrison's Beloved. And through those we look at the overarching idea of the supernatural. Now, of these two texts, I would say Beloved is the most challenging obviously in the subject matter that it covers, but also in the way that it is structured. But it is a text that our students find, once they've got to the end of, it's like one of those really good books, it takes you a while to get into, but once you're into it, it's very hard to let it go. Uh, we compare both of those, and also we bring in context. Now, you'll be familiar with context when you've been studying things like Macbeth or An Inspector Cause or Jekyll and Hyde. It's all those other ideas about the context which helps us understand a text in more detail. The other thing that we do in the first year is we look at Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire, another classic drama, and we draw in the uh, context surrounding all of that as well. So those are your first year exam texts, and they are all formally assessed at the end of the second year, but obviously during the first year you have uh, lots of tests on them as well to keep those skills going. Then we move on to the coursework in the summer term, and for the coursework we look at two texts. One is a modern play called Jerusalem, and that chapter you may see noticed on the cover is somebody called Mark Rylance, who most of you know from the BFG, that's the one that people realise, um, or Wolf Hall, he's a very famous actor, and he created the character of Johnny Byron in Jerusalem, and we compare it with Simon Armitage's version of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. The coursework is something that uh, teachers fought very hard to keep with the new specifications. Remember, this specification is only a few years old uh, because it really teaches you about writing and crafting a piece of work. And that's a really enjoyable part. You have a control over that. You have a 3,000 word essay. So you can really go into exploring ideas in lots of detail. And it also is quite a good thing for you to have uh, when you go on to university. And a lot of literature students want to go on and study some form of literature at uh, university, whether it's to lead them into journalism or um, any kind of research job. All those skills are really important. And then we come on to the second year and we have two new texts. Obviously we have Shakespeare, and at the moment we are looking at Measure for Measure, which is a very, very current play in terms of the issues that it deals with, or the ideas. Uh, we may put this over to a Midsummer Night's Dream at the moment, but obviously Shakespeare will be on the agenda. And finally, we come to the jewel in the crown, and really, you can't study literature without studying the poetry of John Keats. And he comes at the end of the second year because really you're not ready for it before then. But students end up absolutely loving this and it becomes, they, they recognise 
his place, his influence, everything, everything comes together. So by the end of your literature course, you're very, very well read, you're very highly skilled in all those skills of analysis and critical theories and meshing it all together. Um, and a lot of our students go on, as I said, to study it further. Ideally, entry requirements should be about a grade six in both literature and language. Uh, a grade five is, is the sort of boundary. But, as I said before, if you love literature and you love a creative approach, artwork, reading, talking, acting, then this is the course for you. Hello, I'm Sarah Hunt. I'm the course lead for English Language A-Level at HSDC Alton. So we do the Edexcel exam board and the students need to do three external exams and that makes up 80% of the marks and they also do a piece of coursework and that is worth 20% of the marks. So for English Language A level the coursework is creative writing which a lot of the students really enjoy. So inevitably there has to be some whole class teaching, sort of lecture style for delivering content but this subject is really a discussion based subject and also the, the students are given the opportunity to work in groups. Um, all the work is also on our virtual learning environment, Google Classroom, so they can, they can learn at home digitally as well. In year two, students carry out independent research, they, they do their own language investigations, and that independence is very much valued by universities and obviously by employers, or if you're going into an, an apprenticeship afterwards, that would be very um, valuable. We take a group of students every year to London to attend the A-Level English Language Conference where they get the chance to listen to top linguists talking about their latest research. We find that, that really does sort of broaden the horizons of students and, and helps them with their, their sort of wider knowledge of the subject. To do English Language A-Level we're looking for preferably a Level 5 in English Language GCSE as well as an, another four good GCSE, so grades 4 to 9. So this subject is a subject that teaches higher level literacy skills, those are going to be valuable whether you're going into university or an apprenticeship or employment. And although the students don't particularly enjoy the grammatical um, part of the course, where we really, really are drilling down into the grammar, it does enable them to produce very high level texts um, and have very sophisticated literacy skills. So that is obviously going to be very, very useful in later life. So, what sort of jobs do they go into? Well, you might think maybe teaching or becoming a writer, but also this A-level is, is very much um, valued by the legal profession, for example, or if you wanted to go into PR or marketing, it's, it's a very flexible A-level. So, last year the students went on to study um, these subjects at degree level, um, there were others as well, but these were the sort of top five. What would you put alongside for, for your A-levels? A lot of the students study law, history, sociology, psychology, um, and there are some other options there, but the subjects that go very well with English language. So, when they're not actually in the classroom, students enjoy taking part in the creative writing enrichment, which takes place weekly. They might also write for the college magazine, The Alternative. And those who want to go into teaching might use some of their non-contact teaching time to work in local schools. So the students enjoy this course because it's up to date and relevant. We, we do study language as it is being used today, such as looking at Donald Trump's tweets, for example, or looking at new words as they, as they become, you know, as they, as they first hit the, usually it's social media. So um, the word like freegan, for example. Students enjoy the creative writing aspect, they get the chance to choose a genre and produce two, two pieces in that genre. I particularly enjoyed marking this one, um, so somebody wrote a pantomime scene for primary school students and, and one for adults. Paper 3 research project I've mentioned before, here are some of the topics that they've studied. They particularly enjoyed gender identity in superhero comics. Um, and this year they had to study masculinity as it's presented in scripted texts. So they would look at things like EastEnders, police dramas, sci-fi films, for example. 
So they enjoy the opportunity for debate and we do look at some of the hard issues. Um, you know, is much of our language white centric is a very topical issue at the moment. Are employers biased against certain accents? Apparently 80% of them are, which is interesting. They particularly enjoy the child language paper, learning how children learn to speak, read and write, particularly how they learn to speak. I mean, is it something that children do naturally or do they have to be taught? So apparently, according to LinkedIn, these are the soft skills that employers are looking for and this course teaches all of those skills. I think two to highlight there would be um, adaptability. The students have to respond to unseen texts in the exam, so they do have to be very, very flexible and be able to, to sort of react, um, which a lot of employers are looking for. And also, they, we do teach this sort of emotional intelligence, looking at identity for paper one, how people craft their identity according to their age, their gender, their political beliefs, their um, ethnicity, for example. And they do actually learn how to read people. Um, which is a, a key skill in, in well, employment, but in life. Okay, so that's English language in a nutshell. Thank you for listening. Hello and welcome to a short presentation on the A-level English language and literature course that we offer here on the Alton campus. It's an exciting and very diverse syllabus, as I hope the following slides will show. The course is assessed by a combination of exams worth 80% and coursework worth 20%. We study a wide range of texts, from novels by famous authors to speeches by famous politicians. How many of these people can you identify? Answers will follow in the rest of the talk. For the first exam paper, we study Alice Walker's famous novel, The Colour Purple, about the experience of African-American women in the Deep South, and an anthology of pre-1914 British poetry, including lots of poems by the likes of Shakespeare, Emily Bronte, and John Donne. For paper two, we study two classic plays, Shakespeare's tragedy about racism and jealousy, Othello, and Tennessee Williams' tragedy about the devastating effects of homophobia in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. For paper three, we study non-literary texts, focusing more on the language side of the course, looking at Truman Capote's journalistic novel about two serial killers, In Cold Blood, and a wide range of spoken texts, from casual conversations to speeches by Barack Obama, among other famous politicians. The coursework component of the course has romance as its theme, and the central text is F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, which students compare to another novel with a strong romantic story, like Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, or Andre Asiman's Call Me By Your Name. Students compare these two texts in a 1,500 word essay. There's also a creative writing component, consisting of two short pieces, inspired by The Great Gatsby. One is a romantic story, the other is a piece of non-fiction with a romantic theme, such as an article about love in the digital age for a newspaper or magazine. We do study language in quite a lot of detail on this course, covering frameworks of language, including grammar and spoken language. We do this to give students a toolkit to analyse the texts that we study, just like a surgeon analyses a patient. If you have any questions at all about this course, please don't hesitate to email them to us. We look forward to hearing from you.